This is the word of God, amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 126. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion. How many of you guys know what he's talking about? Zion's referring to the church, amen. Referring to you and me, amen. Everybody say he's talking about me. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were like those who dream. <laughs> we were like those who dream. And our mouths were filled with laughter. And our tongues were filled with singing. We were like those who dream. <sighs> See, I don't know where you've been. I don't know your whole life story, but I know mine. And there was a point in time where I was captive, where I was in bondage. If everything, everything, you might have grown up in the church, but you know what? You've been freed in areas of your life. The Lord has set you free. And it's like a dream. We were like those who dreamed. Yes. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to make a statement. Listen to me. If your life isn't like a dream, you need to figure out what you're doing wrong. You're doing Christianity wrong. You hear me? I love you. If your life isn't like a dream, you're doing Christianity wrong. God is so incredibly amazing, it's ridiculous. There's not, I don't even, I just feel like speaking in tongues right now and having somebody try to interpret it. Interpret. Huh. It's like a dream. It's like a, <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Our mouths was filled with laughter and our tongues was singing. And they said among the nations, the Lord has, gra <laughs> the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And thereof we are glad. Amen. Oh, man, I tell you, there's people that look at my life now compared to where it was 15, 20 years ago, and they're like, Come on. what? Come on now. You? <laughs> Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. This thing that God has given us, that he's made available to us, through the blood of Jesus, bringing us in the right standing with Heavenly Father and having access to our Heavenly Father and allowing him to change our very intentions of our heart, allowing him, to, his word to transform our thought life, allowing us to become more like him every single day. It's crazy what Jesus has provided for us. And when you do this thing the right way, it's like a dream. I'm going to tell you, I was molested as a child. I grew up in a broken home. I was pornography, drugs, all these things from a young age, younger than my youngest son. Bound, trapped in these things. Not one little bit of emotion attached to any of it. It's like a dream. It's like, wow. Like, I know that, uh, that I went some of those, through some of those things, but because of my pursuit of him, because of my relationship with my Heavenly Father, all those things have been completely removed, and it's just like a dream. It's like a dream. And I'll tell you what, I can't help but have my mouth filled with laughter and have my tongue filled with singing. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not talking about doing church. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about having a real relationship with the Almighty God. That's what's, that's what's going to change you. That's what's going to change your family. That's what's going to change your neighborhood. That's what's going to change this city. It's when people have an on-fire relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when people know who their Heavenly Father are. And when people are reflecting their Heavenly Father. Not looking like how you used to look. But looking like how he looks now. Behold, we look in the mirror and observe the glory of the Lord. We're being changed and transformed into that same image. That same image. That same image of the mirror of God's word. We're being transformed and changed as we behold his face, as we have relationship with him and fellowship with him. See, I was addicted to drugs and pornography and other, all of the, to other types of things. And I didn't get religious and stop doing stuff. I gave my heart to him. I gave my life to him. 
You know, so many people talk about, you know, getting Jesus in your life. Jesus don't want to be in your life. <laughs> you need to get in Jesus' life. You need to give him your life. You need to make Jesus your Lord. Well, come on, Jesus, you can have this part over here, but not, but not this. So don't, don't, don't touch that. No, no, we don't want to talk about that, Lord. No, we, when you are fully engaged in your heart and your life is fully engaged with the Lord, the God will do some incredible things in your, in your heart and in your life. Notice how I always say this, in your heart and in your life, in your heart and your life, in your heart and your life. It starts in the heart. The best we can do religiously in the arm of the flesh is behavior modification. You're putting a lion in the cage. How many of you understand that when you put a lion in the cage, it's still a lion? You stick your arm in there, you might not have one when it comes back out. It's a lion in the cage. That's behavior modification. God wants heart transformation. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. Because if he can get your heart, he can get your life. And your life is worthless apart from him. I know that's not good for everybody's self-confidence and self-esteem, but you, your self needs to die. Amen. I love you. God loves you. But you're the reason why you're in the mess you're in or have been in the messes that you've been in. Nobody to blame. Okay, we repent and we, we move on. Amen. We repent. We say, God, here I am. I surrender. God wants a life of surrender. He wants a heart of surrender. And when you live this way, when, you're, when your heart is postured towards God with no relent, with no holding back, I don't care about my own life. I'm going to tell you, man, there's weeks to go by. There's, there's months to go by. And then there's years to go by. And next thing you know, you're way over here, and you look back, and you're just like, what just happened with the last five years of my life? It's literally like a dream. It's literally like a dream. Literally like a dream. Like, wow, God, I mean, no, no, no fretting, no, like, stressing out. Because why? Because of the surrender to the Lord and the fellowship with, with Heavenly Father. This is the way that God designed it. This was his plan. This isn't the gospel according to Pastor Shane. This is the Bible. Everybody say it's the Bible. It's the gospel. Jesus said that no man comes to the Father unless he comes through me. Jesus and the sacrifice that he made in his body and his flesh for us in our place was our access point to go back to Heavenly Father. And that's the relationship with him is what's going to dictate how we live our lives or the lack thereof. See, we can come to church. We can have revival meetings go weekly and miss the whole thing and not grow spiritually much at all. I've been there, done that. There was a part of my Christian life where, you know, it was all, not all of it, but it was kind of just hype. You know, you're going, you're on, you're on fire, but you're, you're missing that, 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 that thing in your relationship with Heavenly Father where you're not holding on to anything anymore. Amen. You're not saying, Lord, I surrender all, but this right here, I surrender all, <laughs> all to thee, my precious Savior. No, both hands out front. God, I surrender all. And it's at this point of surrender that God can finally do something with you, with your life. See, Jesus said that your life is a seed. He said and if, a, if a grain of wheat or if a seed does not fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. The power and the purpose in your life is contingent on your death. The power... And the purpose of your life, your purpose that God has for you, is contingent on your death. Your surrender and your submission to his word, his will, and his way. Because unless your life goes into the ground and dies, we won't see the resurrected Eve. We won't see the resurrected, we won't see, we won't see it. <laughs> Sargenet. We want to see the resurrected Sargenet. But when you live a surrendered life, oh, the power of God comes upon you, resurrects that 
dead thing and newness of him, the newness of life. And he gives you so much power. He gives you so much strength that you don't have in yourself. I'm a, oh, show brother, sabe de ese. Yes, tarabaste, fanapende, calasso. E prasteti endi, alaba, sendri ose. Yes, bafere kesto. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. He'll do some crazy stuff with you. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. When you surrender, the power of God, the spirit of God resurrects that thing called your life Amen. that God's given you. Amen. And you'll do stuff and you'll just shake your head sometimes like, wow. Wow, Lord, did we really just do that? You're so amazing that you would use a knucklehead like I used to be. Ah. And it'll even make the people, it'll make the, shoot, I'm seeing double. It'll make the nation say the Lord has done great things for them. When you die, when you surrender, you give your life to the Lord. It'll make you be a sign and a wonder. People will look at you and be like, wow, I knew you way back then. Amen. Hallelujah. There's so much grace available for you if you'll just die. You know, and I, I know I'm, I'm somewhat preaching to the choir tonight. Is that water for me? Hmm. Thank you. I'll take the cap. Give me a second. Selah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good to be home, man. Yeah, come on. I, you know, there's no place I would rather rather be where I'd rather worship you know fellowship it's such an honor and a privilege to be in not just the four walls but a part join knit together with, with you guys it's an honor it's a privilege to watch everybody grow people's families being saved people's families being restored ah hallelujah <laughs> you know, we've we've experienced, you know, like world class musicians and worship leaders and I'd still rather be here listening to pre recorded tracks with y'all and worshiping and pressing in. <laughs> I love those guys. God bless them. They're amazing. Like we're even gonna have Brother Eddie, you know, here in the end of this month. It's gonna be awesome. You know, but man, there's no place like home. I love y'all. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. But here's the deal, y'all, like, there's things that we have behind our backs, some of us, you know, there, there's those things, you know, and that's what's keeping, but you're frustrating the grace of God. You're frustrating it. You know, I'm not saying that when you leave here tonight, you better be perfect or else. That's not what I'm saying. That's religious, that's, that's demonic, that's manipulation, that's control, and that's not the heart and plan of God. That's not what I'm saying. Listen to my heart. Listen what the Holy Ghost is trying to put down. Hallelujah. There's these things where we, we, we won't even allow God to talk about it with us. There's little things. And it's separating us from the grace of God that's available for him to do in us what he wants to do. The change that needs to happen. Amen. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you. Let's everybody just close our eyes for a moment. Hallelujah. Just want everybody to open up their heart right now. Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we just honor your presence right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your glory in this place, manifesting, hallelujah, on each heart, on each life. In Jesus' name, from the youngest to the oldest. From the youngest to the oldest. Now, everybody, as you, you continue to open your heart to the Lord, I want you to just ask him, say, God, what, what is there in me? 
What are those things that, that I've been hiding from, that I've been trying to hide behind my back, God? Like, I want to give these things up so I can live before you pure and holy and go about doing good and doing those things that you've called me to do. See, this is intimacy. This is communion with Heavenly Father. This is all it is. It's not some weird spiritual thing where you speak in Elizabethan. No, it's just you're opening your heart. You're being made aware of something that needs to change in your life. God gives us these opportunities. And when you grab a hold of the principle and you apply it in your personal life, it's amazing. Every single thing that you go through, you learn from and you grow from. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's our Father. He's perfect. He's a perfect Father. And He's calling us tonight to take the hand out from behind our back. And say, God, I give you everything. I give it all to you. So right now I want to make a call. If you know, number one, that your heart and life is not right with God, that's the first thing. We need to fix that immediately. I know this is a little different, but this is the Holy Ghost. You can't say to me, Pastor Shane, I don't really know if, if my relationship is good with, with Father God, you know. Like, if I was to die right now and stand before him, like, I can't honestly say that he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I can't say that. And if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. We need to make sure of this thing. Thank you, brother. Come on. Then there's, there's no, nothing to be ashamed of here. We all have to start here. And I'll be honest with you. I do this every day. I do this every single day. God, forgive me. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your grace to help me in time of need. So I don't do that no more. My heart does not want to violate your will. My heart doesn't want to violate your heart. God. I thank you for your grace, for me to change, for me to be more like you. See, this is how we live, strong and healthy, before him in love. <sighs> now you guys that raise your hands, go ahead and stand up and come forward. I promise you, I promise you. That if you give your life to him every single day, it'll be like a dream. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not in a week from now. Maybe. It could be. I don't, you know what I mean? It's according to you, your desire, your will. But as you pursue him with everything you have, with all that you are, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, whoa. woo It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. What God has done for us. I don't know why anybody in their right mind or even had half a mind would not want what Jesus has provided for us. Jesus said that I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Not, you know, like, I come to give you life. Yeah! woo -hoo! But not just, he didn't, he didn't just stop there. He didn't just say I come to give you life. He said and. <laughs> And, <laughs> and more abundantly. Wow. He's come to give us his life. Not some low form of life that we've experienced outside of him. Addicted to things, bondage of fear and anxieties and, and gossip and all these crazy things that we've been indoctrinated in in our whole lives. But the life of God, where you have joy and you have peace, I'm going to let you know, I haven't had a bad day in as long as I can remember right now. It's been a long time. And I ain't saying nothing bad ain't never happened. I ain't saying that it ha there hasn't been some days where you're just like, oh, God, I just cry out right now for your mercy and your grace. I thank you, Father. And you know what happens? You know what happens? 
He answers. Amen. Amen. He answers. He's faithful. He's faithful. Every single time. Not a bad day, man. Because of my relationship with him trumps everything. Look, look like I said, I've, I've made some bonehead mistakes. And I learned from them. I'm not going to go and blame so-and-so, or they didn't do this, or they didn't do this. No. God, I thank you that I'm your son, that you father me, that you correct me, you teach me, that you're growing me to be strong and healthy and look like you, more like you, more talk like you, walk like you more. Father, I thank you. And he takes these little things that I should have and could have did, but I didn't. And he shows me those things, and he says, now you know. Next time do this. Now you know. Next time you do this. So it keeps me clean. It keeps me, it keeps me healthy. It keeps me strong. So I'm not worried about what so-and-so didn't do or what so-and-so said or, you know, you understand what I'm saying? He's a good father and he loves us. Hallelujah. I really had it on my heart to talk about the body of Christ and how important you guys are to us, to me, to one another. It's important that we that we understand some of these things. But I don't even know where to start, honestly. <sighs> Hebrews 10, that's a good spot. 24. Ha, ha, ha. There's so much good stuff in this word, man. And the Bible says, And let us consider one another to provoke one another unto love and good works. <laughs> Not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Everybody say, not forsaking forsaking. the assembling assembling of ourselves ourselves together. together. Now, I'm not like an uber Greek scholar understanderer (laughs) I'm just a pretty simple dude but I know that this combination of words here is very uh, what's the word phenomenal there's a point here not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together see I am who I am in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a part of the body of Christ. There's gifts, there's graces. Amen. There's there's things. Everybody say things. There's things in you. There's graces upon your life. There's gifts that God's deposited in your born again man, in your born again spirit. There's things in you. That's what you're bringing. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, who we are in Christ. See, we all fit together. Amen? As a body. We fit together. Let's look at uh, Ephesians 4. I'm getting kind of... This is such a big thing, man, to try to summarize it with. (laughs) Ephesians 4. Verse 16. In my Bible, for some reason, it's split right here in this verse. I'll look at uh, on my phone and make it easier on me. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I love, I love the, word the Word of God. Because, because it, is truth, it is absolute truth and it's life to me. And it's life to me. Amen. Me too. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Verse, oh boy, we got to go to like chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> no, let's, uh, oh my gosh, it's all so good. Oh, Lord Jesus. <sighs> all right. Let's look at just 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him. God wants us to grow up. Everybody say, God wants me to grow up. He's a good father. He wants us to grow up in him and be strong. Be healthy. How many of you parents don't really care if your kids are sick? They got raggedy clothes on, snot nose. No, no. Amen. 
Grow up in all things into him, into him, into him, his image, who he is. Christ, from whom the whole body, now get this, whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. Listen, the graces and the gifts and the the things that God's placed on the inside of you. When you come to church, that's what you're bringing. You're bringing yourself. You're recreated, born again, spiritual person in Christ. You're bringing that to the rest of the body, the assembling of ourselves together. It's the body of Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. See, what you have and who you are in Christ is a supply that you're bringing to the body. Amen? According to the effective working by which every part does its share. How many of you guys who have been here for a while or maybe not even that long, you you just feel when people have been kind of missing a little bit. You know what I mean? Because there's that, there's that supply. There's that joint that's kind of like little disattached, and you're just like, man, I miss so-and-so's, so-and-so's voice in worship, or, or, you know, where's so-and-so? You know what I mean? Like everybody does its share. And when you bring who you are and what God has placed on the inside of you to the rest of the body, and when you're doing your part, it causes growth for the rest of the body. causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Everybody say in love. love. It's all about love, man. First to him and then to everybody else. Amen? Amen. I want to encourage you tonight that you have so much value in the body of Christ. You know, we hear it all the time, like your your, 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 uh, original value, and that's all amen. That's all scriptural. That's the heart of God. That's the will of God. That's the plan of God. Amen. Your purpose in him. We hear those things a lot. But the body needs you as well. The body, in order for us to grow together in love and be stronger, we need who you are in Christ. So that means we need you, we need you to grow up spiritually strong and healthy. And be aware of the fact that when you're coming to church, you're not just sliding in and like the last song, you know what I mean, sitting in the back row. And, like, we don't want people sliding in and just coming and going. We want people knit. We want people joined with the body. You know, this isn't some religious, weird, cultish thing. This is the Bible. You're either a part of the body of Christ or you're not. And if you're not, we can fix that. It's not a big deal. But if you are, come on and let's go. Let's grow. Come on and let's go and let's grow. Because when I grow, it causes you to grow. And when you grow, it causes you to grow. And when you grow, it causes you to grow. (laughs) Ha ha. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to read it out of TPT because they really nailed the heart. Jesus, we want to, how many of you guys want to grow? Me too. Let's look at verse 18 first in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Like I said, I'm in a TPT, so it's going to be a little bit more passionate. It is the passion translation. But God, everybody say God. God. Now, I want to say this. I'm going to give you homework tonight. Go back and read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen? You'll be blessed. Amen? I prophesy it to you. It's the word of God. You'll be blessed. There's so much here, we don't have time to go into all of it. But God has carefully designed each member and placed it in the body to function as he desires. How many guys God's placed you here in this body? It was his plan. It was his purpose. 
It wasn't Pastor Jason's. It wasn't Pastor Hannah's. They didn't plant you here. God, as he desired, as it pleased him, he made you a part of this body. God carefully designed you. The Bible says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. You were predestined before the foundations of the world. You were carefully designed. There's so much value to who you are in him. And once, once again, we go back to surrender. We only, we only experience and walk and live these things out through the surrender of our lives. Amen? Amen. You've been carefully designed by God and placed in the, in the body to function as he desires. You see, God's not going to require you to do what he's called me to do. Amen? Amen? You might not be graced and gifted in those areas that God's called me to. Yeah. God's not going to call me to go and go and go and do what you're called to do because I might not be gifted and graced in those areas. We all have been carefully designed and fit into the body to do what he specifically wants us to do. It's his desire, and it pleases him. So when we come to church and we assemble ourselves together, we assemble ourselves together with the rest of the body joined in it. Realize you're bringing all that you are in the Lord Jesus. All those graces, all those gifts, that careful design that Father has placed upon you and in you. You're bringing that to the rest of the body. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And it goes into the body parts and no competition. It's all so good. So good. Go back and read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Everybody say, I will. Go back and read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 tonight. There you go. You all said it. <laughs> Let your yeses be yes and your noes be noes. Amen. Let's scroll down here to verse 25. And everybody say, he has done this. Father God has done this intentionally. <sighs> He has done this intentionally so that every member would look after the others with mutual concern. So that there would be no division in the body. In that way, whatever happens to one member happens to all. If anyone suffers, everyone suffers. If one is honored, everyone rejoices. You are the body of the anointed one. And each of you is a unique and vital part of it. You are a body part of the anointed one. We all together collectively make up the body of Christ. And how weird would it be to see Carter walking down the street with, with one leg? Just kind of hobbling, right? <laughs> Bouncing around on one leg. How weird would that be? How important is that second leg to the rest of the body? You might be a leg. There might be somebody here or somebody that's not here tonight that's a leg. See how important it is. God made it this way intentionally so that every member would look after one another. Amen. That there would be, what's just happening? Good old touch screen. That there would be no division in the body. I know that's one of the heartbeats of this ministry is unity and love. No division in the body. When you realize how important you are in the body, it shouldn't make you prideful. It should humble you and make you realize how important everybody else is in the body as well. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. When you realize how much Father God loves you, does it make you all prideful and puffed up and arrogant? No, it makes you realize how much he loves everybody else. Amen? Amen. It makes us reciprocate that love. It makes us just like, I receive your love and I give it out. I receive your love and I give it out. That there be no division in the body. And that way, whatever happens, one member happens to all. If anyone suffers, everyone suffers. If one is honored, everyone rejoices. You are the body of the anointed one. Everybody say, I am, I am. the body of the anointed one. 
and each of you is a unique vital part of it. Amen. We're 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 putting we're putting it out there. We love you. You're here. This is your body. This is where God's placed you. He's carefully designed you. You have a purpose in this house. Amen. Look at me, youth. I don't care how young you are, Silas. Look at me. Put your what are you doing on your phone? Oh, you're on your Bible app. That's that's a good answer. That's that's my kid. <laughs> what are you doing on your phone? I'm on the Bible app. That's right. <laughs> Y'all about to see it, boy. Woo! <laughs> Saved by mama. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, guys, like, we're serious about this thing. This is, this is who we are. This is, this is what God's made us. Amen? We're not playing church. We're not playing religion. We're not here to climb some social ladder and yeah. bump elbows and you know, be exalted because of our charismatic personalities. No, we're here to pursue after him and become like him more and more every single day. Amen. That's the whole purpose of this thing, is to represent him more accurately, more clearly, every single day. Today is the worst you'll ever see me. Because tomorrow is going to be glory. And the day after is going to be glory. And the day after is going to be more glory. Because we go from faith to faith. And we go from glory to glory. There is no going back. There is no backstepping in the kingdom of God. It's impossible for us to lose. Because we're one with God. Hallelujah. Impossible. Impossible. Huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor, you got something? I mean, I can keep going, but I just kind of feel like, I don't know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Father, thank you for your presence in this place. God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we're so grateful. It's such an honor, a privilege to be exactly where you want us to be. To be exactly where you want us to be. Locked into the body of Christ. One with the body of Christ. Just as much as we're one with you, Father, we're one with each other. Lord Jesus, this was your prayer. This was your prayer. That even as much as that we're one with you, that we're one with each other. We thank you for your plans and for your purposes for the body of Christ. We thank you for being a part of it, God. For the honor, for the privilege. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on, everybody. Just open up your heart and worship him. Worship him. Press into him right now. Press into him right now. It's in these times of communion and union with Heavenly Father that he can do more in your heart and life than, than what can happen in a minute. That can happen in five years of you trying in your own effort. These moments, these, these moments of intimacy with him where you can just open up your heart and say, God, search me if there be any unclean thing in me. God, search me. I want to be more like you. I want to be more useful to the body of Christ. I want to be more of a blessing to the body of Christ so we can all grow strong together in love and fulfill the purposes of what you have for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's something God spoke to me last week about being more cognitive, more conscious of when you come to church, number one, being aware that you're bringing who you are in him to the rest of the body. You're adding that. 
I want to challenge you. Ask God, what can I do for somebody in my body today? What can I do for somebody in the church today, Lord? Like I got this Weist Bible. It's extra. I don't need it. I'll never, I'll never read two Weist Bibles at the same time. Like, God, like who can I bless with this? I don't need it. Like who's got a hungry heart who can appreciate this and expanded translation of the New Testament? Because we have the Amplified and then you got the Weist. Well, I mean, you think the Amplify is loud. The Kenneth Weist translation is, is an expanded translation. So I'm just using this as an, as an example. Like, God, who can I be a blessing to in the body today? Amen. Being more aware of these things. Like, you got a little bit extra on your paycheck. Like, God, like, who's in need in the church? Who can I just, you know, like you see a visitor come in. Somebody looks like they may be in need. Just break out a little bit of bread and bless them with it. Like, God bless you, man. You know, we love you. Amen. Like, Lord, what can I do? Being more purposeful with who you are in him. Being more purposeful when you're coming to church. Amen. Amen. It's important that we esteem who we are in Christ and bring that to the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We love you guys, man. And we're believing for awesome stuff and growth. And, but that's, that's an individual thing. It's not just the church building is going to get bigger. The church people, the body is going to get bigger and stronger. Amen. More capacity internally to do more. There's not one person in here God hasn't called to incredibly awesome things. Amen. Not one person. There's a scripture right there to prove it. Amen. I think I'm done.